Nikhil and a couple of others will join. I hope all the uh, partners are here more than anybody else we need you. There are 30 of them. So even if there are just two of you from each, we should have 60 in the room. I don't know if I see 60 people. So let me, let me make sure that you guys are all here. It's more for you than anybody else. We'll be glad to have any other person sitting here because I think about 10, 15 of you have also sent in your questions. Uh, Satya, his team would like to really have an engaging session with you. You see, many of the partners, when we spoke to them, can you also get Aparna? She, if she's there, so I think Aparna, my colleague, would have interacted with you. She was managing all the partners. It was fascinating having 30 partners, and trust me, these are all, each and every one of you is doing some fascinating things. I mean, be it C0C from IIT, M itself, or uh, be it Winehouse again from here, but again, we also have, as I said, we have Swiss Next, that's Switzerland, we have uh, Toronto Business um, Council, which is here, which from, of course, Canada. So you have, I think, multiple countries represented here, multiple domains represented. We have, um, oh, well, I think when I went through the 35 partners, it was, it, it, it was a really wonderful spectrum. And many of you guys doing high impact work. So I leave it to Satya. We are starting off right away. As I said, this is going to be, um, he, he is going to be leading it. But from what, they, what he tells me, um, apart from uh, some introductions they want to give about what they are doing, setting the contest, he would like it to be as engaging as possible. So I leave it to him. Um, if, I just request if, I, I don't see how I can announce it, but. Guys who are not here, they should land up fast. I'll make sure I do that outside. Thank you. Thanks, Satya. Okay. Good afternoon. I hope you all had a great lunch, uh, good sessions. So here, what I really would like to talk about, as you all would be wondering, right? Um, there's a lot of work that's happening, a lot of support that's been given to the ecosystem at IIT Madras. And many of you would also be thinking about how to engage and what more can be um, done through this network that we have. So, So while uh, Narsi is getting people on board here, uh, I don't have a, I'm not very used to standing behind a podium and talking. It's making it a little difficult for me. Uh, mic is down. Yeah, that constrains me. So I would really like to move around and talk. So the Energy Consortium itself as a platform, it was actually created to see how we can work together to address this transition. So for me, climate change, as we call, uh, has some certain impacts, but that requires a lot of solutions to be created. Solutions to be created both from the field perspective, the adaptation perspective, but also from um, technology perspective. So many of you are creating solutions, technologies, and it cannot be done by individuals sitting in a laboratory or an office space or a research park like this. It probably requires a lot more work in the field, a lot more people who necessarily have to carry this through. So uh, finally, if you look at energy, uh, the, the, the energy that is available to us are controlled and supplied by large companies. So we have to co-opt them in. We, we can create as much as we want in the labs, but if you don't have co-option that happens, uh, nothing really moves forward. So one of our objective is to build partnerships. So that's why the session is called Building Partnerships. We build partnerships with companies that provide us the energy. We build partnerships with companies that help design those systems, large companies that help design those systems. We also build com partnerships with companies that use these systems. And we do this across space. We do this with IT companies. We do this with companies in the hard to abate sectors. So what it really means for all of us here is we have our feet on the ground and our ears to the ground. It also allows us to get feedback very fast because this is a sector that moves very slowly because technology takes time, but we can't afford to have that kind of time, so we have to build it together. So that's what we have created here as an energy consortium. So I'll just quickly uh, probably introduce you a little bit more about me. I mean, you probably have seen me. So this is a nice picture I took last time, so I thought I will have it here. 
Uh, I'm a faculty here in the institute uh, in the applied mechanics department. Uh, most people ask, what is applied mechanics? Uh, you can define it whichever way, but I work in the domain of energy. Um, I do head the energy consortium here. We also set up a na nationwide network of um, industrial energy assessment cell, which allows us to help most of our manufacturing sectors, which is the MSME. And it was supported graciously by Kotak Mahindra Bank. That's why the sector, the center is called the Kotak IITM Save Energy Mission. Uh, here our objective is uh, primarily energy efficiency and then later allow us to move towards uh, how do we um, work with them as we develop technologies. Prior to here, I did spend some time where I met most of my partners and colleagues here who are working with me in the Energy Consortium at GE, Global Research Center in Bangalore. And a little bit of time with uh, Forbes Marshall, uh, which is a Pune-based company, which is where my exposure to MSMEs and manufacturing sector comes from. I long back did my PhD at Texas A&M. My email address and phone number are there. I would encourage anybody who is interested, reach out. We can have a chat. Uh, you can always come down to the institute. would be happy to uh, host you there. So as such, when you ask, as a, I mean, there are three types of people here, right? One who is generally the curious, of course. There are people who wants to research, uh, really looking at technologies, really looking at uh, infrastructure. So one of the endowments that we have at IIT Madras, the unfair advantage that we have is the infrastructure that we have created over the last 60 years, which now I can happily and proudly say it's world class. I mean, whatever you want to do, 20 years before when I had to do a PhD, I wanted to do a PhD, went abroad, but there's no reason right now. And that's why I said in my opening remarks yesterday, there is no dearth of technologies. And similarly, there is no dearth of people whom you can talk about technologies and really get solid uh, inputs and advice from. Startups, those that want to create, want to leverage both the other two, the researchers and the investors. So this is one of the, uh, I would say, most happening ecosystems for that. And that's where we have the energy consortium, the research park, the building where we are on, and the institute working very synergistically to help create this ecosystem. And I'm very happy that you are all here, decided to uh, join us this weekend, and hopefully will continue with us more to go. Now, how it all started, all IITs are known to do this work. I mean, they are great scientists, publish a lot, started patenting and all. But how did we create or wanted to create this kind of an ecosystem? It started out with um, what I call as the research initiatives program. Um, it's it's across domain. It, uh, you probably know that institute was announced as one of the institute of eminence, out of which we had many technologies that came about. So, what I want to suggest here is, though we are here for talking about technology and sustainability and energy, but it's not just limited to that. You have work that happens on circular economy, for example, and all of this transition hinges on materials and chemistry. So I was just telling somebody else that it starts there and it ends there. So if you really want to do things in the most sustainable way, you need to understand the chemistry. You need to understand where it all begins and where it all ends. And more and more, you need to do it with newer and newer tools, new tools for computation, new tools for manufacturing, new tools for design. So that's where this research initiatives program really comes from. One of the research initiatives which we have scaled to into the energy consortium is the energy propulsion and renewables, which allowed us to work. I mean, we picked one, and that's by no way exhaustive. It's one of the domains, so it's, it's a fairly large ecosystem for you to tap into. Now, that has led to what I call as the centers of excellence. Now, you can see here, and each of these centers of excellence can work with startups, can work with companies, also leads to many other uh, uh, outcomes. Now, for, for anybody who wants to understand what the space is, these are really the global leaders in terms of that particular topic and particular technology. And if anybody who wants to assess a company or assess, should I be doing this technology? Uh, this uh, During lunch, we're talking about carbon capture and, sorry, uh, direct air capture. So if you really want to know, does it make sense? These are some of the places that you can go. And if you really know the company that you're investing in or the, the topic that you want to pursue for your uh, startup, is it strong enough? Can you build a moat around it? Can you build decisive advantages? These are centers that have the people, have the community to help you with. Not just the faculty, because each of these centers also has a lot of scholars and students. And as you're building your companies, you may want uh, people to work with you. And this is where you find them. Um, 
across spaces now we are starting to collaborate within the centers as well the energy consortium and the uh, technologies for lean carbon construction for example so if you put them all together what happens right so while we talk about individual entities while we talk about individual entities our ecosystems do not exist in isolation so we have to put it all together so we have the built environment that we are working on the uh, the um, uh, what you see there but there is a lot of work that happens in iit madras uh, in the form of uh, clean water you also need policies we have a the nationwide carbon zero challenge professor indu is here we will be probably launching the next edition of the carbon zero challenge and there is a digital backbone that's getting formed so a lot of us lot of the companies here talk about digital but what is digital in the context of all of this so as we talk about sustainability i think this is where we are headed to and this is where we need to really focus on now uh, i just want to put this slide up because most of the times we we say what are we good at but i also want to say what are we bad at because as we create uh, sustainable uh, systems and communities as we really work for impact we also need to look at areas that we need to improve upon right so uh, while as technologists we create these solutions i did speak with a few people who are working in the impact space and these are areas that we are really struggling and we would like to collaborate as we develop technologies we would like to collaborate to understand how we can focus on uh, i just want to take a few minutes to introduce the consortium itself my colleague uh, dr nikhil tambe here heads the consortium along with the industry engagement partnerships but it is towards technologies for decarbonization so what is the objective deliver impact through partnerships of course uh really be become the one stop solution for industry to lower their gg emission but more importantly develop technology sandboxes for de risking r&d one of our biggest challenges the risk inherent risk in r&d because of which most of us do not want to take the next step also the ability for us to nurture climate tech and research to bloom so we we have all of the infrastructure but how do we create and convert those to climate tech startup so I'll talk about it a little bit more of the attempts that we are attempting to do, but broadly, if you look at it, we are organized as uh, seven centers of excellence, multiple areas, including whatever is the pressing need right now. We have set ourselves with nine industry partners as of now to help shape the directions. We do have an international center. This is not just work is not just happening at IIT Madras, but it's happening across the world. So if you think it's it's the only place things happen, it's wrong. So we we create a global. community of uh, like minded faculty and researchers that can work with um, i'm happy to say we are part of the um, unf triple c so we are trying to get our voice heard uh, globally as well now um, i just want to give you a perspective on how do we look at this whole transition right so in multiple cases uh, you you hear bits and pieces you hear somebody working on bio hydrogen or somebody working on perovskite solar cells as a as a tech investor or as a researcher or as even a startup there are so many things that are happening now how do you put yourself so we have organized ourselves aligning with the way industry looks at it into six vectors or six hubs some of them are naturally identifiable yesterday you heard professor arvin talk about hydrogen hydrogen is a very big initiative but if you look at the um, the uh, columns here hydrogen itself comes from multiple sources right you have when you talk about hydrogen it's not a single problem you have the power electronics that comes to the hydrogen so that's a really big initiative that needs to happen and the grid infrastructure to support it now you talk about hydrogen in terms of utilization combustion of hydrogen in terms of turbines and you talk about how do you compress it because you want to transport hydrogen so it's not a hydrogen is a very nebulous term and it's been there forever but how do you then convert it into actual problems and this is a stack approach when, when you say upi succeeded upi did not succeed because somebody invented the whole thing it was a whole stack approach when you every single element needs to be solved for so when we are looking at the startup space we really need to look at where do we want to uh, identify and where do we want to play and that's the same thing for us as research so as a community we are looking looking at things we identify the gaps as i see it uh, as i as i point out here and say how do i solve for the gaps in terms of the low trl research but as a community that we want to scale this up these are the same areas that we have uh, opportunities to make it big so when we say if i am working in hydrogen 
I don't necessarily mean that I will work in an electrolyzer. There may be many areas that I need solutions to be found. And that's the same thing with uh, other, if other areas as well, right? It's carbon capture, utilization, and storage. It's a huge area. What do we do with it? And the most important and most neglected or uh, less talked about element is energy efficiency and the economics of energy use, primarily because the fuel that you don't consume has the highest carbon reduction potential. So that's one of our big focus areas as to see how do we create an energy efficient economy. And this other thing about climate uh, change and climate action is climate adaptation. Uh, uh, our friend uh, Mridula Ramesh talked about it. But here that's to do with resiliency of systems. And here we focus on resiliency of energy systems. So how do you make your energy systems come back online really, really quick? And what technologies are available? And what are the gaps that are available? So how do you create a stack-wide approach? As we develop theses, this is some of our thesis as to how do I identify that? And the last aspect is, of course, uh, increasing renewable energy into the grid and into the energy mix that you use and effective use of storage, particularly beyond lithium chemistry. So these are some of the ways by which we look at things and necessarily not uh, the, the, the um, same way that you should look at it, but broadly an approach that allows us to look at gaps and opportunities to fill. So in terms of energy efficiency itself, I just... I just want to take a minute to talk about this project where um, we are working with six other IITs to really scan the entire country and work with MSMEs in those regions for becoming more energy efficient. But what this also allows us to do is to unearth the opportunities for decarbonization because those are finally the manufacturing engines of our country. 95% of the output comes from them. 95% of the companies are there, not necessarily the output. And these are the companies that are most vulnerable to the impact of whatever we do. So that's the that's kind of network we have created. We've been successful. There's a stall outside that talks about it. But this is, this is a backbone that we are leveraging to scale our activities. The other thing that I want to quickly talk about is just we talked about hydrogen, right? How do we look at this in context? Because uh, when we say somebody is working on carbon space, uh, particularly on technology, I can be talking about capture, I can be talking about sequestration, I can be talking about utilization. So as a, as a researcher or as a startup or as an investor, how do you look at this space? It's impossible to look at this in isolation. It has to be looked upon in context. And that's what we are trying to do with this capstone. The objective here is that if I come up with a newer mechanism of capture, it has to work in context. So here we are putting together a platform that allows us to work with not just our own researchers, but the industries that we work with, some uh, logos that I have put in there, but also other researchers who might have novel material. So this becomes a de-risking platform for all of us together. So one of our objectives, as I said, to create sandboxes, this is one attempt to do some similar sandbox. So it, it of course, um, as academics, we, we get lost in some of the daily work that we do and probably publishing. So what we have set upon ourselves is to create these mission mode projects. And these mission mode projects are what I call as tech demonstrators, but not just that. It will also enable the ecosystem to understand what does it take to deliver each of these items. So when you talk about a new battery, when you talk about a new chemistry, you need a mechanism for you to test it and evaluate it in context. So this objective of this particular uh, mission mode set of projects is to deliver that for you. And the last element is, while we are all talking about many, many things, how do you measure impact? How do you measure you are working on the right things? How do you measure if you put 5 million tons of green hydrogen, which industries will benefit? What incentives to provide? So one of our attempt to do that is to create an industrial decarbonization modeling tool, which essentially attempts to build a ground up platform for us to assess the impact of many of the technology changes we do and the cost of it. So that's, that's essentially trying to say, if I were to give a subsidy or if I were to give a, a benefit, where would it be most impactful? So I hope during our energy summit this year, we'll be launching that platform. So, but that's a, that's a direction of what we are looking at. So I would, at this point, I would like to just uh, want to thank our members of the uh, consortium. So these are, um, as I would, was mentioning, large members uh, who have been supporting the formation of the consortium. But it also gives you the network that we bring, bring along to help in this journey. So it's, it's something that, um, we can rely upon to provide us uh, advice, but also rely upon to provide us the platform for us to uh, work on and take forward. 
Uh, this also uh, includes our academic engagement partner. I'll just uh, quickly uh, skip this slide. And before I uh, move on, I just want to give you a perspective of the challenges that we face, right? So far, so good. We, we identify opportunities, we build technologies, we even bring it to the scale that you see here. Many of them, right? Many of them are at a stage where any startup or any investor would be happy to take it forward, provided there is a team around it, provided you have a company that's formed around it, because each of them are addressing hard problems in this space. But the challenge we face is that after this point, it really becomes difficult for us to scale this up. So how do we address this problem? And this is a very important problem in this space because many a times, unlike the software world, this cannot be bootstrapped for long enough by people who are doing a day job and an evening job. It requires full-time people many times, at least the business uh, aspects of it. So how do we address that is what we are trying to put together as a thesis. So the missing piece, so the missing piece really here is um, we have the deep tech as I had described to you so much, and uh, there is a lot more deep tech available in the country. Of course, we have the capital. I mean, a lot of you are here with uh, the intention that you want to deploy your capital in the most impactful way. Obviously, we have a bunch of entrepreneurs here, the early entrepreneurs who want to make a difference, but we also need venture builders. We also need people who has the experience in building these kind of enterprises. So that's one of the objective of creating this um, um, studio, venture studio called Indus DC which is DC stands for decarbonization, Indus stands for the civilization which is as old as India or even beyond. So the objective is can we create deep tech based um, decarb venture startups um, and how do we work on it? So I have my uh, colleague from there who is helping me build uh, Kaustub. If some of you are interested in talking about it, uh, you can just stand up. Yeah, so Kaustub is here, you can get a hold of him. But this is a, our model that we are trying to understand and build. The whole objective is we do develop technologies as you already saw there in my slides before that goes all the way here. Here is where all of my grant money stops, more or less DST, DBT, wherever I do, they are happy as long as they show the prototype. But for the industry to benefit, for the country to benefit, for the community to benefit, we need to build it. We need to really take it all the way along. And that's our attempt through creating this venture studio to see how do we do that? And we cannot do it through the traditional way where we invest money and look to see if the company will grow. We have to actively nurture it and build it. The venture studio model is an attempt for us to create that and see how it works. These are some of the members. I just introduced Kaustub here. Uh, Kushant Uppal is an alumnus of the institute who is putting this together. We have some advisor, uh, uh, we have some investment advisor, uh, Raghuram, who is helping us raise the first set of corpus to do that. And we will soon be launching this in the next uh, couple of months. Now, just to give you an example, one of the projects that we are looking at is what I call as a Project Trigen, but it is essentially to decarbonize uh, heating and cooling, uh, really looking at improving energy integration or renewable energy integration into the um, uh, building energy mix. Yesterday, Professor Ashok talked about uh, how he is intending to decarbonize buildings. And one of the core technologies to decarbonize buildings is to store energy in the end use form. And the best way to store energy in the end use form is in the form of phase change material. So this is a project that we have onboarded right now. And this is uh, one of the first projects that we will be building. And we are looking at the storage space to start with, but uh, we are yet to identify more companies. The second one we are really looking at is long-term grid scale storage. So two aspects of renewable energy. One is you store for the energy use in the end use form, and one you store for seasonality, long-time energy storage. So this is the second company, a uh, second idea that we are uh, evaluating. The model that it, the way it works is you have an inventor who's most likely to be a faculty or a faculty team. And a postdoc or a PhD from the faculty's group is likely to be the technical EIR or one of the co-founders. And then through the studio, we try to bring in uh, a business CEO or a, a co-founder who will help grow the company, who has experience in growing such kind of company. So, Overall, uh, this is the thought process. We have just been starting our journey. This is just the uh, early stages of this work. But more about this and the work that we do at IITM and how all of us can get together and discuss on very hard topics. Climafix is a great, a great opportunity for meeting like-minded people from the investment community and the startup community. The Energy Summit is a global uh, uh, conference on looking at what's happening across the world. It's to understand what tech is being done and where we are, it's kind of a way for us to benchmark ourselves as to 
where do i stand with respect to the tech that's being done across the world because everybody is working on it everybody is racing ahead so how do we differentiate ourselves so some examples of what we did last year and uh, i'm looking for ideas from you to engage more so please feel free to um, i learned from arvind yesterday uh, qr by death but anyway i have only one qr code please feel free to engage with us uh, post your questions as to what you want to uh, know from us answer from us and uh, how do we keep in touch thank you very much for the time and now i'll allow uh, narsi to take over he has curated a set of questions for me but i'll call upon all my colleagues here before i let you go uh, but maybe i'll take the questions and then we will launch the um, czc going brilliant yeah it's um, yeah, i think it's you see the iatm i've been working with these guys off and on but almost last two years it's a massive ecosystem even you will be surprised even with an iat 80% of the people don't know everything about the entire ecosystem in fact many times most people outside iatm know more about what's going on inside iat seriously i'm not joking you go inside it's ah, it's okay um it's 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 a massive ecosystem there are uh, for innovation alone i know there are some four or five things how they coordinate i don't know something called c5 there is something called nirman and there is uh, c0c which uh, um, she is doing uh, indu is doing so each of them is doing excellent job and it's a massive ecosystem yeah so what what he presented is from the iatm ec to a large extent but when he answers questions many of them have asked questions which may go beyond uh, energy consortium as well and go beyond the matrix you put most of which were around energy um, well that's also because most ghg emissions are from energy 80% of ghg emissions 75 to 80% of ghg emissions are energy related most others are from agriculture so it's only natural that Um, these guys look at energy the reason i am giving this short intro is even though they the co-organizers are energy consortium we have in addition to satya we have nikhil from energy consortium we have of course indu also from iatm and the answer indu can also come up along with nikhil why don't you to come up we have charge for them though that there enough indu why don't you come up uh, is there any anybody from iatm ecosystem the research ecosystem doesn't matter uh, what the and the we you guys have asked question my colleague anirudh will read out the questions we have about 10 15 questions from you guys the partners and after that anybody else has questions to them i would request first the partners to ask the questions and after that anybody else can ask the question but if the questions can be around how you can partner with iit madras it will be good because you go back with something actionable and uh, the time you have put in come here for an event that is co organized by iit madras can be extremely valuable so i'm going to ask my colleague anirudh to read the questions to you he is the guy in fact uh, is, uh, is aparna around is she there yeah so why don't you do come down they are the two who had um, uh, done all the good work with um, why don't you just come here Uh, aparna most of you must be knowing uh, um, uh, round of applause for these two folks 35 partners i have not seen any conference even anywhere in the world with 35 partners i have seen conference only with 35 delegates so having 35 partners is a massive thing they put together the whole thing they work last about month and a half um, anirudh will read out the questions satya his team will answer and once this set of questions is over anybody from the partners can ask questions you can just come up with the front you want to ask questions will help you not to the the audience is that okay satya yeah that's fine uh, there uh, carbon zero you guys have some some questions so it's a well you know they are a hybrid she is from iitm ecosystem and she is also a partner so carbon zero challenge is also a partner but she has also asked yeah there is a question from your side also what do you want to know Oh, you have something to launch? Oh, okay, okay. So, uh, why don't why don't why don't they do something? They have something to launch. And after that, you should the questions. I'll okay, go. You go ahead. Hi, thank you, Narsi. So, yeah, I think uh, 
uh, I've been talking about, we've seen Carbon Zero Challenge uh, logo and been talking about it on and off. But uh, I, we want to take this uh, occasion to briefly talk about what we are doing in Carbon Zero Challenge because it is still not probably very clear uh, in your minds. Uh, we have a, a, a video, uh, we want to show you that, which will actually tell everything about what we are doing and then I'll be happy to take some questions along with uh, Satya. And at the end of the video, we want to launch uh, the fourth edition of Carbon Zero Challenge. Okay, so let's play the video first. One, zero, and lift off of Space Shuttle and Lance. Probably I'll just give up. Can you sh share the presentation? The video is not connecting to the. Can you start the PPT? PPT is also not visible. Ah, the mirror is not. There should be one F. Uh, Yeah. It's come now. Now you play. Now you play. No, it's not visible here. Okay. Ah. Play the video first. Lift off of Space Shuttle and Lance on a mission to build. We face unprecedented challenges relating to human driven climate change, population growth, and urban expansion. These challenges are more acute. Young innovators that can think of unconventional and revolutionary solutions are the key to addressing them. Understanding this need, IIT Madras launched Carbon Zero Challenge, or C0C, with a vision to create a global impact by combining three powerful factors, namely innovation, entrepreneurship, and environment to protect the future generations. The contest identifies and nurtures student teams and early stage startups with unique and ingenious solutions to the environmental problems of India in five thematic domains of agriculture, industries, transportation, urban areas and cities, water and waste management. The second edition of the competition, C0C 2019, is an all India contest launched by IIT Madras 
in June 2018 with full support from Virtusa Corporation. C0C 2019 started with 996 applications from 25 states across India. After a rigorous process of shortlisting by business experts and technical experts, 24 teams were selected. These shortlisted teams received training and mentoring in addition to the financial support of up to 5 lakh rupees over a period of 6 months to build their prototypes and evolve their business models. The progress of the teams were closely monitored throughout the contest with staged fund release, monthly progress reports and a one-on-one -on -one midterm review by a panel of judges. The contest culminates in a three-day exhibition launched on World Environment Day, June 5th, 2019, where 12 experts headed by a three-member jury panel from industry and academia evaluate the teams. The winning teams will be announced in a grand ceremony on June 7th, 2019. Here is a quick look at the shortlisted teams. A Coimbatore-based startup, CarPro Technologies, has developed an energy-efficient and environmentally friendly agricultural dehydrator to increase the shelf life of fruits, vegetables and spices for a year without any change in their nutritional value, color, taste or aroma. Team Magma from KCG College of Technology in Chennai has developed a multifunctional, electrically powered, remote controlled agricultural machine designed for those low-income farmers with small farms as a replacement for human or animal labor. Pristine Energia, an IIT Madras-based student team, invented an eco-friendly, self-sustained integrated closed-cycle converter to produce activated carbon from coconut shells in a single-step process, unlike the expensive two-stage process currently in use by the industry. Team Alicious Energy, a spin-off from IIT Madras, has developed a high-energy density 3D printed tubular PEM fuel cell that has superior volumetric power density and low operating costs than conventional alternatives. Ingo Electric is a startup from Bangalore that is building an electric kick scooter customized to Indian road conditions with airless in-wheel suspension tires, secure swapping fast charging battery and three wheel attachment that can be monitored through a mobile app. Team Gita from IIT Madras has developed a personal mobility solution targeting students and office workers in urban areas. These unique class of e-bikes feature excellent on-road performance and incorporate pedal assist and power on demand technology. Another student team from IIT Madras, Freshen Technologies, has developed electrically powered cold storage solution that can be charged offline for energy efficient cold chain logistics. Clean Electric, a startup from IIT BHU in Varanasi, aims to solve the problem of last mile connectivity and enable faster adoption of electric vehicles in India with their electric powertrain solutions to increase the range of light transport vehicles. Knowing the quality of air in your neighborhood has become easier with IIT Madras Team Katra that developed an air pollution monitoring system that integrates information from distributed sensors across different stationary and movable locations with AI and machine learning algorithms. Startup UFarm from Mumbai is combining highly efficient vertical farming techniques with IoT technologies and data science to deliver pesticide-free, fresh produce at your doorstep using 85% less water than conventional farming techniques. While manual scavenging is illegal, this practice continues in several parts of India, leading to unnecessary deaths and personal hardship to the scavengers. Team Sipoy from IIT Madras has developed an automatic robot capable of moving across all three dimensions to homogenize and clean the sludge, thereby providing a viable alternative for cleaning the septic tanks. 
Team Insulite Ceramics from ICT Mumbai is solving the challenge of fly ash generated from coal-based thermal power plants by creating lightweight and thermally insulating ceramics that can be used for indoor tiling, decorative pottery and industrial or domestic thermal insulation. Indrium Biologics, a startup from Thiruvananthapuram, developed an automated mini biodiesel reactor that works on the principle of enzyme-based catalysis to convert locally available variable quality cheap feedstock such as used cooking oil to biodiesel. Team Water Chakra from IIT Madras has developed a prototype that uses waterless urinals to achieve significant water savings, recovery of low carbon footprint chemicals, biofertilizers and treated water. Their solution aims at successful business model around toilets in line with Swachh Bharat Abhiyan. Team Ricks, a student team from Techno India, NJR Institute of Tech, Udaipur, evolved a process to develop eco-friendly, low-cost and lightweight bricks, paver blocks, curbstones, tree guards from waste material such as waste plastic, marble slurry, demolition waste and fly ash. Team Tefnut Freshwater, comprising of alumni of IIT Madras, are generating fresh water and cool dry air from sea breeze captured just before the salt spray using a scalable energy efficient system to address the twin challenges of water scarcity and rising temperatures. Students from ICT Mumbai developed germ-safe water technology to disinfect water using hydrodynamic cavitation. I think uh, you got the idea. Uh, so we are stopping uh, due to uh, time limitation. So that is what we have been doing. So Carbon Zero Challenge is an initiative where we are reaching out to students and early stage startups across the country, not just IIT Madras. And we are funding them uh, 5 lakhs each to take they are proof of concept to POV, proof of value. And uh, we also not only just fund them, we support them with uh, uh, training. Uh, we reach out to our uh, Gopal Krishna Deshpande Found uh, Center for Innovation for training them on uh, customer discovery, business model development, uh, sustainability metrics. We have our partner here, uh, Dr. Ramesh is here. So there is a a whole set of uh, training and funding is given for startups who are interested in sustainability, environment, in the five domains of natural resources like water, uh, energy, uh, soil, air, and materials or solid waste. So the Panjabodham concept is what we are adopting. Re so looking at resources, resource recovery, resource depletion, resource contamination and whoever has a solution for that we are welcoming you to apply for carbon zero challenge and uh, yeah satya can you do the honor of launching carbon zero challenge 4.0 so three editions what you saw is for, for the carbon zero challenge 2.0 we recently finished uh, carbon zero challenge 3.0 in july so totally we have supported 75 prototypes uh, many of them have become very successful in getting funding to grow and we have uh, together we have about seven startups which have come out of this and they are doing really good. I think many of you uh, would have recognized uh, Solinas, uh, the robotic scavenging uh, startup. Bricks is doing really good in terms of plastic bricks. Inigo Electric based out of Bangalore. They are all some of our star startups uh, who are now uh, even grown bigger. Okay, so, look forward to all your support and participation in Carbon Zero 3 4.0. Thank you, Inzu. Thanks for inviting me to launch it. You should come. Oh, you can only do it there. Okay. Uh, Maybe then we'll take a picture. <laughs> so, we will launch it. So, so we have. You can go back a little bit. It is loading. Yeah. So
So can you go back a little bit? I want to show the two things. Okay. So this is the new uh, phase of Carbon Zero Challenge 4.0. You will have all the information. We have an end-to-end -end portal where you can upload your ideas on the portal. It will be sent to a judging panel. We have an army of judges, I call them, including academia, industry, uh, investors, entrepreneurs. They're all part of our judging panel. Uh, and we get a lot of feedback from industry on their challenges. We get feedback from the government sector on their challenges and throw it open for uh, the students. Uh, so this is... This time we are going to have like a two-part uh, challenge. Can you go back to the previous slide? So last time when we, yeah. yeah. But yeah. Okay. So as you see, this time, last time we asked for proof of concepts and many of the students missed out because students came up with a lot of bright ideas. They didn't have a proof of concept. They were all eliminated in the very early stage. So this time we reached out to funding agencies. CSR is our big uh, funding uh, support. Uh, Wipro has come up with this idea of supporting idea to proof of concept stage. So we don't want to leave out anybody, whoever has a bright idea, but yet not yet a proof of concept or a lab scale model. You can apply to the first one here, ideas to impact supported by Wipro. And Whoever is already having a proof of concept, early stage startups, they can directly apply for the Carbon Zero Challenge 4.0. So that's the new thing we are introducing this year. Thank you, Indu. I request you to be here. So, Narsi, your session. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. So I would like to have a, a short Q&A session uh, where we have asked some questions from our partners. So firstly, I would like to, uh, uh, from Agni's side, uh, they would like to ask uh, IATM, how can IATM help us gather expert insights for our ongoing or future projects? And also, can IIT Madras assist state and district administration to effectively deploy, assess, and scale technologies in the most vulnerable pockets of the country impacted by climate change. Yes. Can uh, representative from Agni stand? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Um, to, yeah. Uh, so. The first part of it, in terms of um, evaluating, understanding, and assisting in technology uh, selection and uh, evaluation, that can uh, certainly be done. Uh, as I was uh, presenting, the multiple centers of excellence with multiple expertise, so we would be able to identify uh, within the network if there are people who could assist. In terms of deployment, um, we generally try to work with partners who will do that. So in areas where we have support, for example, in energy efficiency space, we work with EESL to uh, deploy some of the solutions. So similarly, I think uh, we have probably established a collaborative with multiple agencies that can help us in uh, deployment wherever it's feasible. Maybe I'll request Indu if she, you have any experience in uh, the space. Yeah, so uh, that's a very interesting question because the reaching the unreached is something which we all strive to. And uh, government has their own programs, but they still need the support of uh, academia, innovation, and technology. One program which comes to my mind is the Unnat Bharat Abhiyan program. I'm not sure how many of you are aware of this. So this is basically reaching out to the villages. Uh, every institute who has signed up to this Unnat Bharat Abhiyan works with five villages of their choice around their colleges Okay, and this whole network is connected to uh, regional coordinating institutes. Like IIT is a regional coordinating institute. There are 200 colleges attached to IIT, and each college is working with five villages. So there is a huge network across the country. It's a beautiful scheme of Government of India, but it lacks fund. They give only for one lakh for a project, which is not sufficient. So. The technical input comes from colleges uh, 
and participating colleges and IIT and other nodal centers. But funding is something which is limiting. So probably we should bridge the gap again I'm looking at CSR funds which can take up these initiatives. The networking network is already there. And if you have one technology, it can reach out to every village in this country through this program. So, One more flavor I will add. Can you hear me? Uh, is See, the expectation on IIT generally when I think from a government agency point of view is very high and very specifically on technology validation. I mean, this extends not only at the state, but even if I go to say a Niti Ayo, uh, Nitya gets a lot of requests and technology coming even from outside of the country. And they want to validate whether this works from an Indian context point of view also. So they have a natural expectation that institutions in India are able to do this. And we have put up our hand and said, uh, we will do the due diligence on these kind of things. Of course, as she elaborated, sometimes we may have our constraints on how many of these we can do. Uh, but that's a good expectation to have. And if you have the infrastructure and definitely the expertise in terms of faculty, for example, we will want to take this forward. Thank you, sir. Second is from uh, Sustainability Mafia. They have asked three questions. First is, how can IIT Madras help startups or entrepreneurs to get the get access to technologies that are yet to be scaled? And can IIT Madras allow external students to use its research lab facilities? If yes, how? And finally, how can IIT Madras seed right industry-focused problem statements where more sustainable ventures need to be built. Okay. I think my presentation would probably have answered all three of these questions. Uh, the first question is yes. Uh, we are trying to create uh, more ventures with a lot of industry focus. In terms of access to research labs, uh, there are a set of research facilities that is widely available for uh, um, use by people outside of IIT Madras. But some of the infrastructure is through networks like the Energy Consortium or the Carbon Zero Challenge or some of these initiatives because uh, as we identify startups and as we identify partners, we also uh, enable utilization of some facilities that can be used by the public infrastructure and the, the uh, people in the public. So all three aspects of it, it is possible. Uh, some of them with caveats, but some of them we are also attempting to move in this direction. Thank you, sir. Third is from uh, Green Tamil Nadu Mission. So their questions are related to forestry and land use. And it's regarding the following. First, the use of AI towards the restoration potential of degraded forest areas. Second, uh, designing a mobi uh, mobile application to access carbon stock hoarding in trees. And third is calculating growing stock in farmlands and developing a carbon footprint calculator to assess the number of trees to be planted for both households and farmers. So this is with regards to how can uh, IIT assist them in the following applications. Okay. So the basic answer is yes, there are um, startups, there are student teams that are trying to work on this, uh, particularly with the, um, uh, the uh, high resolution imagery being opened up by uh, ISRO for uh, academic and other uh, startup purposes. So it's being available. Uh, having said that, uh, it's, it's I think uh, an area where there's a lot of, uh, um, I would say, competitions or hackathons can be done because given the um, interest and given yet the discovery of the problem, I would encourage if people from uh, Green Tamil Nadu or the Tamil Nadu missions to say, here is a competition that we want to do and we can galvanize the resources to come and put their minds together maybe in the format of a hackathon or some kind of a guided problem statement so that uh, we can unearth as many problems as, as many solutions as possible. Yeah, these are larger challenges and it has to like uh, be done at a larger scale across the country. So ideally, I think what Satya said, it can be a national uh, level grand challenge and people can work in their own uh, uh, local regions come up with these numbers and there can be a common portal. These things have to be planned, thought out in a, in a large way, probably in uh, collaboration with the government who is also interested in uh, getting these data in one platform. So we'll be happy to take it up, uh, initiate such discussions if there is a larger interest in these numbers. Oh, thank you. Uh, this question is from Akshay Kalpa. 
they have asked how can iit madras help get the people in the iit ecosystem close to soil and they further asked can a marriage happen with players like akshay kalpa who can get together to achieve it Already we are doing it with carbon zero challenge. I told you one vertical of the Panchabodhams are uh, is soil, and uh, we are looking at innovative solutions. Partners like Akshay Patra, who are already doing it in the field, can join hands with us as uh, judges and mentors of uh, student teams who are who will be working uh, in this. So we can even have a special initiative, special drive for uh, soil related. Uh, innovations uh, if somebody is having showing interest and in funding such initiatives thank you ma'am uh, this question is from urja uh, what are the different models and if any which uh, in which iit is offering for industry academia collaboration so satyas presentation elaborated on this but in short again the energy consortium was formed to be a not just even industry academia uh, industry academia government kind of collaborative effort uh, so we definitely request uh, you know that anyone who from a industry point of view wants to work on problems which may be uh, you know larger than a simple bilateral problem statement i mean I, iit madras specifically has had a industrial consultancy cell for the last 50 years we worked with industry consistently for these uh, you know last five decades uh, what we have probably only changed now over the last few years is we are trying to address much larger and larger grander problems and trying to make it a interdisciplinary effort so we are trying to pull horsepower from across different departments in iit different uh, uh, you know faculty areas and the reason for doing this is each problem may not be as simple as solving a simple material aspect or uh, you know being able to assess something for uh you know validating it for example right so if the problem is larger the energy consortium is is going to be of help if not we definitely have a industrial consultancy cell anyway to do this thank you sir for this question is from wilgro uh they have asked what are the effect efforts you would like to highlight with rega regards to uh cleaning uh, rivers particularly in chennai and uh, do you think they have failed can collaborations with institutions like iit madras can help them uh yes definitely we have a very big water group in iit madras spanning across different departments like uh, environmental engineering from the civil department chemistry and some mechanical engineering faculty are also involved so we have the expertise and we are already been working with the government of tamil nadu uh, in a big way the chennai uh, river restoration trust uh, the chennai corporation so we are there in all their panels uh, and uh, in terms of certain specific studies they would like to do they come to iit madras and we give we do conduct these studies apart from that many uh, corporates part of their csr initiatives they reach out to us for uh, several uh, water restoration projects lake restoration projects so we have we have been involved in restoring uh, siruseri lake uh, uh, behind tcs uh, and also sembakam lake which is also a very huge lake with a big contamination issue so all this is ongoing so we will be happy to expand this uh, implementation projects we work with a lot of partners of course uh, all the initial investigations are done by iit the strategy for uh, restoration is given by iit and then we engage with partners on ground to implement it and finally i would like to end this part, uh, partner q and a session with c0c's two questions from them uh first question is what skill sets do you expect from a candidate you want to hire for environmental and sustainability vertical in your company and secondly what capacity building programs you uh, iit madras needs for your employ employees in the areas of sustainability and environment this is a question to the audience what skill sets do you need if you want to hire students from iit madras in the uh, in your company the second one was expert 
experts in mass uh, mass cultivation of algae you want expertise and students who are trained in that and so what capacity uh, This is again directed to the companies because a lot of companies, uh, because of the ESG requirement, they need to, looking for capacity building of their own employees currently. Uh, so we will uh, we'll be happy to help you in this capacity building programs through our IIT Madras ecosystem. So is there any specific need? Uh, you can always reach out to us. Anybody wants to talk? the <coughs> capacity building point of view international framework for the sustainability standards ASSB, SASB and GRI the awareness of the standards framework and uh, the recent ESG reporting uh, formality what is being discussed in the international level that awareness should come into IIT students so that they will be able to talk the international language on this uh, we are uh, talk about Indian standards, but uh, we have to get oriented to the international standards what is being developed at this point of time. ISSB is the governing standard which needs to be understood by Indian uh, sustainability uh, space. So uh, as part of the consortium, we have a group of faculty uh, based in economics department and management sciences. So together we are trying to address this. Satya mentioned about the industry energy assessment cell. So through that, we are already uh, addressing scope one and scope two requirements for these companies. Uh, with scope three, broader uh, implications such as GRI and SASB that you mentioned, we are trying to ensure, see, India currently doesn't use them directly. India uses UN Sustainable Development Goals, and from that, we have evolved our BRSR, which is being employed. Uh, for us, even getting BRSR to be well-known and uh, you know, used by many other industries is uh, the current interest. We've uh, been hosting some awareness workshops in this area. Uh, we are also cognizant that there's a lot of carbon trading related, uh, you know, uh, jargon that's going to come in and this is going to be part of the same thing. So to, to your point, we are uh, trying to actively address this. Uh, we, we've been also asked to put together some training sessions, if not certification, at least training sessions in this area. So this is something that we are focused on the international level, international reporting, IR reporting is starting from 2024, from 20, uh, 25 it's going to be mandatory. Uh, so as far as the scope 1, scope 2, I think there is a, a great awareness which is coming now. Scope 3 is going to have at least 80% of the impact on the whole sustainability space. And uh, it's a high time IIT kind of institution has to get involved. Yes, and again, I mean, one thing to add here is some of our partners, I mean, they're here on the uh, stand here, like Cummins, Infosys uh, from India, Aditya Birla. These are companies which are have started reporting this from this fiscal year because they are mandated to do so by SEBI. Uh, the good part is they are our members, so we are able to work with them in trying to understand how they are approaching this and you know what challenges they see. So we have both sides of the story. So uh, you know, from an international standards point of view, yes, we should be cognizant. But the companies that I talked about just now are already operating in, you know, I mean, they are multinationals. So they have been doing those reporting for some time. That's why they are well off. We are more worried also about how the sectors here, particularly the MSMEs, are going to have to cope up with this. And although they may never be mandated to directly report, they are still vendors and suppliers. So they are part of scope three for some of the large firms. So we know that this wave is coming in maybe three years, if not today. Uh, so we are trying to address the MSME challenge more because that's the need from the country point of view. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, so we work with multiple startups that are looking for passionate and technically strong candidates. If IIT Madras can nudge these students to intern um, with uh, with climate tech startups before they graduate, right? It could be like a climate jobs fair or something like that. 
it will help the students also get the exposure that they're looking for and the startups will get the much needed support that they're looking for in terms of you know human resources certainly uh, i think that can be arranged and uh, we you can actively work at the, with our placement uh, office where they do and uh, become a part of the recruiting both internships and uh, the uh, the regular recruitment season uh, we can put you in touch and you can reach out and uh, i think they will be quite happy okay so i think we are almost at the uh, close of this session um we would really love and like to work with all of you in whichever capacity there were a few more questions on uh, uh, organizing tech shows and road shows and how iitm and the industry can collaborate we will be happy uh, if any of you are hosting certain sessions uh, would like us to participate uh, would be keen to participate and similarly we would also encourage if you have certain grant problem challenge statements in any of these areas with research park and iitm madras we would be um, happy to host them and see how we can uh, put all our collective energies together to achieve far beyond what we can um, achieve individually